Hello, how are you? Fine, and you? Doing great. Um, so to start, I really, truly, and honestly love poor things very much. I've loved talking about this all day long. Um, but it is so interesting how it is divided in Tabella's journey. And when you are editing something that is so distinctly kind of, you know, the black and white of her beginnings and that childlike start into, you know, the brightness of Lisbon and then going on into, you know, Alexandria and everything else. What for you was the kind of trick of nailing the the distinct kind of separation between the aspects of Bella's life and her journey and through like all of that and working with Yorgis to kind of make sure it all flowed so beautifully. Well, yes, the easy thing, the easy part was that we had to follow Bella Baxter's character. But the tricky one and the most uh, challenging one was that, you know, it's a character that is new. We've never seen that before. Mm -hmm. So there was a lot of improvisation from Emma's part to develop this strange character who has a, you know, a baby's mind, but it's, it's, it's a full grown woman. She's a daughter and mother together. And yes, the challenging part was to try to make this, although there are a lot of different shifts of mood as a child shifts mood, but it, it, we do follow a development. That was the, the most uh, difficult part, but yes, it, it, we had all the material. It was just a matter of, you know, living with it all the time and, you know, trying things. It was a lot of different options to follow, more extreme or more satirical or more dark. It was just a matter of procedure and, you know, accepting the material and finding the, the true true moments, it's, I, I would say. Yeah, and it is, I, I keep saying, it is its own Frankenstein story, even though it's very bright. It is, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's a Frankenstein if you turn a bunch of lights on um, and threw color on it. Um, but for you, when you are making this kind of like vibrant, Frankenstein story uh editing that together I I assume can't be you know the easiest because you have to kind of like navigate you know telling this darker story with the like vibrancy that uh Yorgos is kind of bringing to the to the table and what was like you know the finding that balance of like you know the darker elements with the kind of the humor that is especially in that first half of the movie um, what were like what was that kind of like the balance? How did you find that with this film in particular? Well, again, I, I we, have, we had to follow the main character Bella mm -hmm. and uh, Emma's performance, and she she was very generous in her approach to that to, to it. I mean, she we had just had to keep her like let's say in innocence. Also, her interest in life, everything she 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 experienced was new. But you know, she experienced it in her own free way, not fearing anything, and uh, you know, an outlook very strange. But if you try to follow it without any conventions, because okay, she she her innocence went against conventions. It, it, it was it had to be kept like that. Even even in her, like for example, in her. Uh, Amorous adventures. There had to be a freeness, a, 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 you know, a free way of expressing her feelings. But again, it had to be done with the innocence of a child that discovers this for, for the first time and not having experienced all the do that or do not do that of the polite society. That that was the main, uh, um, let's say, beacon that you know dr drove us to to experience her, uh, her her development through the, the story and I think uh, Lanthimos succeeded in creating and Bella, um, of course Emma Stone succeeded in creating a character that you know in the beginning she marbles like a child and then she's a full-grown woman that has gone through a lot of personal experiences but also philosophical uh, mature and uh, having a distinct way of um, presenting herself to society and for me it was surprising that Lanthimos maybe for the first time he's he, he's very optimistic in the end bella wants to change the world she, mm -hmm. she's she's a great optimist and that that's how the film ends yeah 
and it is very much her story which I do love like I love that this is hers and it is fascinating how we we know so much about the men around her and kind of like what they're trying to do to tamp her down even God in a lot of ways like he's protecting her but he's keeping her down was there ever ever you know things that ended up on the cutting room floor of them to kind of keep it her story or was the script always just mainly Bella with the men just kind of sprinkled in as we ended up getting in the final product it was always Bella and the men trying to control her in their way. Godwin Baxter with his paternal outlook, uh, Max McCandles also with his um, uh, with his uh, point of view, you know. But in the end, uh, uh, Duncan Weatherburn as well. But you know, in the end, even even their marriage is not like a romantic marriage. It's it's a it's a two mature beings, and he accepts her for what she is. And they also discuss freely if they have been tested for diseases. So it's it's a kind of, of, an, of an arranged marriage. And in the end, we see here with her lover, the, the girl she met in the Paris brothel. So it's it's a free and uh, open uh, uh, relation that is controlled and uh, put there by Bella Baxter. And um, the men have to have to follow her lead in that. Yeah, I love it. And I also love how, um, especially like with your work, how quick her progression is and like the aging process and how she is like, it's established how she does not age normally for like having a, a young brain in a woman's body, that it is something that goes very quickly. And they like how the movie kind of marries this with like how she's dressing and like the set and like everything kind of compounding it all together. And how was how were the conversations about like making that all come together to convey that to the audience? Because that's my favorite part is that it's very clear that she is aging rapidly with her brain, and we. It's true. It's true. In the beginning of the film, Godwin Baxter introducing him to Max McCann says, "You know, her age, her mental age, and her body are not quite synchronized." He says, "Language is coming, and she's progressing at an accelerated pace." Mm -hmm. So progress is accelerated really usually i've known and worked with yorgos for almost 25 years we've come to a point that we don't need to speak about these things i can read them in the, in, the, in the script i can read them the way he's directing and he's doing his decoupage and i present him with uh, some options and then you know usually the way it is that i take some notes that say more than any discussion could say. It's it's enough for me to hear him say, okay, not this way, but this close up maybe there. And that of course changes the whole structure of the scene. And then when we go to the procedure of um, you know, working on the separate scenes and we have the first assembly, then we we have to of course take out some stuff because yes it, it was uh, a lot of material and a lot of uh, work done in the in the in the production and we had to follow certain uh, you know rhythmic rules for for, for the audience's sake uh, what they need to know some things that were not necessary necessary were taken out but nothing uh, essential to her character mainly or all, all the yeah. things that taken out it was some uh, things that we knew them from different situations they just maybe repeated themselves yeah and it's uh, I love it like truly so much it's such a cool kind of realization when you because that line I was like oh, okay we're gonna see it happen like throughout a significant amount of this movie and it's not it's like within a couple of scenes and it's very cool to kind of watch unpack but for a last question this watching Bella's journey throughout this movie is very amazing to kind of see her go from, you know, this woman who had no agency to like, like you said, this is her home and they mm -hmm. all have to deal with her and what she says goes by the end of the movie. Um, with a movie like Four Things coming out and you getting to like, you know, Yorgos, it's a shorthand. What were the two of you, what do you hope audiences take away from Bella Baxter's kind of journey and story? Are you guys excited that it's coming out and people are going to meet her as a character? Yes, this is always the hope. I mean, for me, watching a film is always in the present and it's an experience. And I do hope somebody getting into the film experiences these situations as they go along. There are a lot of 
uh, you know, of course, there is a lot of laughter and uh, co comic situations, but there are moments that, you know, if you see it the sec a second time, maybe you will discover more like uh, philosophical aspects to the film and more uh, a truly, you know, a question. It's, it, it, it is not different from other films your work has done in the sense that, yes, there's, this is there, there is an individual faced with a society which has, which has its, its own rules and the individual has to uh, con either conform or fight these rules. And of course, individuals in between them, they try to control each other. And, you know, language is not simply language, it's maybe violence or hidden something. So it's it's a main thing of his uh, of his work. But in this situation, I think the, the experience of the audience will be more uh, exhilarating, I hope, and uh, more positive in the end. It has, it has its, uh, some dark undertones, but they're not so much uh, on the on on up like our, our other films, but they are still hidden there. Yeah. I do hope the experience will be, and I, I believe the experience will be great because I've seen it in in the festivals and audiences do, do get engaged with her character and her developments. Yeah, um, I can't wait for people to get to meet Bella. I love her so much, and thank you so much for talking with me today. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Have much. a great one.